All right. All right. So um so it's been how long has it been? Like a month or something? Yeah, something like that. I don't think we've been active since uh, the end of the Asia tour. I think the last episode we did must have been uh, just uh, prior to the Thailand Masters, right? True, very true. Wow, wow. So um, it's been a long time. We have had a, a vacation from the Bantam experience, I think it's fair to say. Yeah, but now we are back. We are back stronger than ever before. Um, <laughs> but I think uh, I, I think we actually tried to to make a few episodes, uh, but it was just impossible for us to fit our our schedules and uh, and make it work. Yeah, it's quite difficult now with the like the different time zones. I, I think it's actually even worse that the difference is only three hours. Like when you're in Dubai and when I'm in uh, in Denmark, because like it's often when when you're training in the morning. I'm still sleeping. Then when I'm training, you're off. Then when I'm off, you have to do the training again. And like it just keeps hmm. on going like that where it's actually better sometimes if we would be like in, in Europe and Asia because the time difference would be yeah, enough for us to be off at the same time during afternoon and evening. It's it's quite tricky to uh, yeah, to make it work with the current time difference. But we'll keep trying. And now we're in the same time zone. So now it's not a, not a problem. Yeah, I'm I'm in Denmark now. So on you, you are in in Switzerland, right? Yeah, I'm in Basel in my Airbnb. It looked nice. I saw it on Instagram. You posted a few Instagram stories. It looks good. Yeah, it's it's quite uh, like it's a little bit odd, but like the atmosphere is uh, is still it's quite nice. Uh, I really I really like it, and uh, I'm also kind of exploring the city a little bit different compared to when you just stay in a in a hotel. Uh, I'm also using the public transport to the hall with the trams takes like 20 minutes so it's it's very easy but it's it's quite nice to uh to explore the city a little bit differently it's actually the first time i noticed that basel is a pretty uh beautiful city actually i, I don't know how many times i've been here but i never really uh thought about that i i i've been there quite a lot i feel like it's uh i get i get germany vibes when i'm in basel a little bit okay yeah um but i i i, I I like Switzerland. I don't know if uh, if the if the people living in Switzerland will be happy or not happy with that statement that I just made. <laughs> oh, probably unhappy, I would imagine. Like I, I really enjoy Switzerland as well, but one thing I do not enjoy is the prices here. Like they're insane. Like I know yeah. we come from Denmark, where the prices are already pretty high, but I'm just completely shocked. It's it's been a few years since I've been here. I'm not sure if I've been here since uh, the World Championships back in. 18, 18, 19, when was it? 19, 19. 19, yeah. Um, so I was just uh, yeah, a little bit shocked. I've just been uh, to an Indian restaurant and uh, yeah, again, I think I paid 52 Swiss franc, which is uh, yeah about the same in euros. So 52 euros for a uh, like a, a dinner. And it was like completely standard, nothing fancy at all. That's a lot of money. It, I mean, in, in general, I think the... The players from India is uh, must be quite surprised when they go to Indian restaurants all around the world because it's so much more expensive than in India, <laughs> and it and it is actually not even as good. So uh, it's a uh, it's a lose lose. Yeah, I actually I spoke to Ashwini Punapa yesterday from India uh, when I was posting those Airbnb uh, videos on my Instagram. She replied because they also stay in an Airbnb, and I also mentioned the prices, and she was like, yeah. If I'm surprised and I'm from Denmark, like just imagine how bad it feels for uh, for them coming from India, where the prices are, yeah, maybe like a tenth of what it is in uh, in Denmark. It's crazy. But the Christian, you're you're obviously in in Basel to play the Swiss Open um, this week. Uh, me myself, I have decided to withdraw from that uh, after all England last week. I've decided to take like a a, a week off uh, to rest, and then I have some opportunities to play in the in the following weeks in uh, in spain and, and in france as well so i decided to to skip that one but actually just coming back to your first point about the time difference and stuff it's actually not even been because of i because i mean i haven't even been in dubai so i don't think that's an excuse from from our side it's just like we've just played different events and just uh back home you've been busy with uh with family duties and I've been busy with training and stuff, so that's not even any an excuse. But uh, but we're back now. We're back. We're back. Ready for? Let's focus on that. We're back. 
ready for season season two or something. Forty fourth episode. <laughs> yes. Well, let's let's get into it. Uh, just um, just before we start this episode, uh, I think it's uh, it's only right that we uh, how do you say that um, send our con- condolences uh, to uh, yeah to everyone who's affected about uh, the tragic news uh, we received this morning. Um, I'm not totally strong with this name, Siapta uh, Perkasa Belawa. Um, I hope I pronounced it uh, close to correct. Um, passed away this morning in, in, in a car accident, as far as I'm concerned. So that's absolutely a tragical, an Indonesian a badminton player. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's shocking. Uh, we, we had one of the one of these uh, um, car crash episodes uh, a while back with the, the, the player from Netherlands, Eric Mainz. Hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I think mean, that was it, actually wasn't that also around this time of year. I'm not sure, but yeah. yeah, it's it's so tragic. So I just wanted to 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 send our condolences here from 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 us too. Uh, yeah, it's 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 so tragic. I've been in contact with with some Indonesian players that I know, and obviously they they must be like extremely shocked and and sad. And yeah, it's it it's so sad. So let's just uh, yeah. start on a sad tragic. note. Yeah. yeah. Start out on a sad note, but um, it's only right that we got to say it. But now let's get into to the Bamson Experience episode forty four, yeah. um, where we are going to talk about all England mainly. I assume Hans Christian. Yeah, that would make sense. It was uh, quite a highlight last week, and uh, I think there's a lot to talk about. Uh, and like, I think it's pretty obvious to start off with just talking about you because. It's been a while since we've seen you uh, produce top results, and uh, not since the Japan Open final in was that September last year. Yeah, I was in. Yeah, I was in the semifinal in Japan. That must have been semifinal September. Yeah. Sem- September, yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think, like, even though you made that semifinal, I think, like, in general, over the last year, year and a half, I think we have kind of missed seeing like this top level from you, but. I was watching all your matches in uh, in all England, and I, I really felt like we saw a uh, like it, it sounds so wrong, but like the old Anna's back, like the Anna's who's uh, yeah, who's uh, doing all like all these uh, tactical things, like you're putting everything into it, you're moving without any uh, issues. Like you can see that physically you were doing well, and mentally you were in like the right state, not being affected by. Uh, unlucky things or like you were just in the right mental state it seemed from uh, all the matches I was wa- watching even the one against uh, Rasmus uh, I thought like this is this is a very very good start and this looks like something that he can build on for uh, the rest of the week so like I was really really impressed and uh, from the interviews I also kind of sense that you are quite uh, quite happy with your own level throughout the week yeah, one hundred percent. It was a uh, it was a phenomenal, very uplifting week uh, for for me personally. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I played four very very good matches. I'm so happy with with my level, and uh, I think you are right by saying that mentally I was also in a really good state. Um, I was like, I mean, I was just curious to 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 figure out uh, how I would how I would perform and if I was able to beat Rasmus just in the first round and yeah, just ex- excited to get going. Uh, I mean, a match against uh, Rasmus is, uh, it's tricky because uh, we know each other so well and we have been good friends forever. Um, oh. But it, it really didn't affect me at all. Uh, emotionally, I was um, just super excited to, to, to test myself and see if I could uh, beat him. And that was kind of like the mentality that I car- carried uh, throughout the tournament. Like I was, cu- I was curious, uh, very excited. Um, oh. Felt like I had nothing to lose, uh, and just uh, obviously my confidence uh, grew oh. uh, after every single match uh, quite rapidly. So all of a sudden, it was like I forgot all about the the past, all about the injuries, all about the the bad results and everything. And I just, uh, I just felt totally free um yeah. and and yeah just just did my absolute best and, and had fun in in the process so it, it was a it was a great great week um if you had yeah. to pick like one of the four matches where you feel like this is the match where you reach the highest level uh like playing wise which one would you pick 
I think, yeah, I th- I think um, I think at some point in, in that semi final against Li Xifeng, yeah. I think I think he he really pushed me to a level that I have not played at uh, very often in my career. Um, I'm 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 almost close to saying that some periods of that match must have been some of the best badminton that I've ever played. I mean, the yeah. pace was extremely high. Uh, he I mean, for for the first one and a half set in that match, I was actually almost thinking that I've never faced a better opponent in my life. I mean, right now he's playing <laughs> so solid. He, he's yeah. the the pace, the pace, the power, the how persistent he was. Um, he he didn't do, he didn't make like any loose shots or any loose decisions, no mistakes at all, and he mm. was just like executing so well whenever he tried to win the points. Mm. Um, and how I somehow managed to climb back from that and actually uh, started to play even better than what he was doing, uh, that, that's, that, that was, that was kind of crazy. Uh, almost turned it around and got a win. Mm. But there's, I mean, there's so many good things about that match in particular, but there's also so many good things about the first three matches against Rasmus and Laksha and, and mm. Ginting. So... It was it was all in all a crazy good week for me. Uh, really yeah. happy with my level, my mental state. But I think in that semi final I reached a level that I have um, I haven't reached that often ever yeah. in my career actually. When I was training earlier this evening uh, here in S- Switzerland, I was training with Matthias Christiansen, the uh, the mixed doubles player from Denmark, and we were talking about your uh, your semi final as well. And uh, like we couldn't uh, really figure out if from that semi final we were mostly impressed by. Li Shifeng's level, or the fact that you actually managed to come back, because like you were you were getting kicked out of that court basically by him, like you had no chance whatsoever. And then, as you say, all of a sudden, you just started winning all the rallies instead. Like you raised the level to like an even higher, uh, yeah, higher level. Uh, and he was definitely playing an insane game. Like I don't, I really don't know where this comes from uh, with Li Shifeng, because like if you just go six months back. I feel like he was not a controlled player in any way. Like it was a lot more uh, like attacking and playing uh, at a much higher risk somehow. Uh, but it just feels like he uh, he found something where he's like he's playing really really controlled, but at an insanely high pace, and he's still, as I say, executing like punishing as soon as you make a lift that's a little bit short or yeah, you give him a chance. Uh, if you are if you are like mid court game or net game is a little bit loose, I feel like he's so fast at moving forward and just just killing it. Like he he was yeah insanely impressive. Uh, and yeah, I I still don't really have an idea of like how you actually got back in in that match. Like like what did you change in in that second game when you got back? You became a bit more aggressive, right? Yeah, I, I feel like he he he. Is it raining where you are or something, or am I oh, just hearing? I think, some... uh, it's my it's my laptop that's uh, trying to cool itself down. Oh my uh, god! So yeah, I think it's the fan that's a bit noisy. Sorry about that. Ho- ho- hopefully, it won't annoy the uh, the audience. Yeah, I'm well, sorry. Well, I don't really have see. a good table where I can put my laptop. So right now, I'm sitting in the bed with it on my uh, <laughs> on my uh, thighs. Now I'm holding it up so it won't be uh, as warm. So hopefully it will stop uh, making the noise soon. Anyway, it's, keep explaining fine, like what fine. what did yeah, you yeah. change? What did you change? What did I change? Yeah, obviously as you said I I came out a bit more aggressive. Uh I I tried to I mean, I knew that I I had to reach close to perfection uh if I wanted to score points. My smash needed to hit the line. My net play needed to hit hit the tape and go over so i needed to aim for absolute perfection um oh. and I, and i managed to to yeah to almost hit hit that level uh at some point um and that was i mean that was kind of crazy that that was what that was what i needed to do in order to actually score points i needed to to deliver at the the highest uh, level possible almost uh, so he really really forced me to bring out the absolute best that I have, um, that, yeah. yeah, that I that I have to offer. So yeah. I really just took my chances, went all out on pace, all out on attack, all out on the net, um, and I also did some like some 
kind of good strokes on the on the net, like some crosses that was kind of insane and stuff. Yeah. So it was, um, yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah. I mean, it was so it was so so fun to 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 play that match because it was so intense. The pace was so so high, and mm. the the crowd was also really getting invested and stuff. So it was uh, it was super fun. You had that one uh, cross net uh, with your backhand where you kind of <laughs> like followed it through with your entire body. Like I, I really mm. enjoyed that one, and it was pretty <laughs> obvious that you were also enjoying it a lot. A lot. <laughs> I was um, like, I, I was really uncertain whether it was going to like go over the net. I think it also clipped yeah. the tape. So I yeah. was like, oof, <laughs> and yeah. then it went over. That was then good. he had one on you a little bit later uh, in the match where he then like stared you down like in like insane. Like he, I actually really enjoyed how he was invested in the match also in like the mental game. Uh, I think sometimes the Chinese, I wouldn't say like shy away from it, but like they're not that much into like looking you straight in the eyes and stuff like that. I, I felt like he was really like taking up that kind of uh, mental fight as well. I, I I enjoyed that. I mean, I actually didn't really notice noticed uh, it during the match. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously, you 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 look at each other, you try to figure out where is the opponent right now mentally and physically and stuff. Uh, and and obviously we had a few stare down stare downs during the match, but when I I watched it uh, again after um, oh. a few times already, um, <laughs> and, and there I noticed like I think he was down zero three in the third yeah. game, and then he mm -hmm. won like five or five or six straight points or something. And after a lot of those points, he was like walking up to the net, just keep staring mm -hmm. at me. Yeah. But I didn't really, I didn't really notice during the match, uh, which was a shame because I would have stared back. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, I thought but, maybe but the, you were just you were so much in your, in the zone that you didn't really notice. So that that like uh, it sounds like that 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 was the case as well. That was uh, that, yeah, that was that was probably probably the case. But very <laughs> interesting to uh, to follow Li Feng from here, I would say, uh, and I'm. As you say, it it kind of comes out of nowhere. First time mm. I saw Li Feng play was was at the Thomas Cup in in Denmark. Uh, when was that? Like one one and a half year ago or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And and he's obviously super aggressive, uh, hard hitting player, um, really attacking style. But it seems mm. like he has been building a few more layers. There's a bit mm. more like maturity to his game. Uh, he's yeah. also willing to play the longer rallies and stuff. So. Yeah, interesting to to follow him from here. Maybe uh, maybe China has like a, a new uh, Cheng Long or new Lin Dan on the way. Mm, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I I played him uh, two weeks ago in German Open, uh, and I was also yeah a bit surprised with the like the way he played because as you say, I felt like he was very aggressive uh, early. Also, when he played you in Thomas Cup in uh, in Thailand last time, I also felt like he was uh, attacking a lot more. And yeah, of course, he almost uh, won German Open as well. So. We saw the signs there, but I'm still very surprised that he managed to uh, to do it. on I think it was his debut actually at the All England, uh, so he was the first men's singles player to win on his debut for uh, yeah. I can't remember how many years. It was it was his debut, um, and yeah, as you mentioned, he he then went on to to win the final against his uh, compatriot. She she. Um, very nice pronunciation. <laughs> I think. Uh, the, the, I mean, I'm very impressed that he that he won the final. Um, she 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 has also played a, a phenomenal tournament, uh, I think. Um, but the the crazy thing and, and one thing that I also think is kind of ridiculous is that on on the Saturday on the semifinal day, uh, Lisi Jia and Shi Yuqi they played their semifinal around two p.m. Mm. And me and me and uh, Li Feng we finished our semifinal around uh, midnight. Uh, <laughs> yeah. almost, almost midnight so they had like eight hours more to to recover from their match and prepare for the next one which is absolutely ridiculous um i mean eight hours more to to rest is so much so li shi feng had to to play like all, all, already like 50, 15 hours after the semifinal mm. and he still still managed to uh to win i think that was uh that that was kind of impressive yeah, extremely impressive. And I think what, what makes it even worse, like eight hours difference is already bad. But what makes it even worse is that you finish so late that for sure he was going to sleep at a very, very late hour. Like, obviously, after a match uh, against you that lasted, what, like one hour and 20 minutes? 
Like you cannot just 93, go like, 93 minutes or something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so one and a half hours. You cannot go straight to bed. Like you need to get some treatment. You need to get some food. Like you need to get your adrenaline levels down again. So like obviously he won't have been able to sleep until yeah, I don't know maybe two or three o'clock at night. Uh, so like I I'm extremely impressed that he managed to uh, to play so well in the final because like not only did he win, like that first game against uh, Shi Uchi was like unbelievable. Like they played so so fast. Uh, and I'm I'm honestly very surprised actually he managed to win because the minute uh, Victor lost at the uh, yeah, in the second round uh, I had uh, Shi Uchi as my my clear favorite to win I think he's uh, he's looked like a player who's really picking up form and yeah I just had this feeling that All England was going to be his event now that that Victor was out uh, so I, I was actually pretty certain he was going to win also with the advantage of that extra uh, extra time to recover and stuff so I'm. I'm genuinely extremely impressed with uh, with Li Xiefeng this week, and uh, I'm very uh, very excited to see if he can uh, follow up. Because then, as you say, I think we will have it like a new new guy to count on in the uh, the top of uh, of the rankings for the future. Yeah, I mean it's it's crazy how many how many good players there there are at this at this point. Um, it's yeah, I I agree. When I I also had Chiu Chi as as one of the absolute favorites uh, after Victor lost, which is uh, is obviously also a, a huge surprise um, that Victor ended up losing to uh, to Ante Young from uh, from Malaysia. I, I don't think anyone really saw saw that one coming. Um, <laughs> no. Um, yeah, and it's 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 kind of crazy that that Victor lost to Ante Young. Um, and then it's kind of crazy that Inse Young lost to Li Xifeng with like 11 and 11 after that. Crazy, so, yeah. yeah. Really crazy. Because like I, I was watching uh, Inse Young against uh, Victor as well. And like, of course, I don't feel like Victor played his absolute best. But it, it's also not like I, f I didn't feel like he played terribly or anything. I actually felt like the Malaysian uh, really deserved the win. He, he played a, a great game and uh, made it difficult for uh, for Victor to play his own game. Uh so yeah, I was actually looking at the the quarterfinal between Ng Si Young and uh, and Xi Feng as like a pretty open match with Li Xi Feng as the favorite still, but yeah, I didn't didn't really see him uh, just beating him eleven and eleven. That was uh, another just very impressive performance. But I mean, it, it wasn't really far far away um, that I, that I could have uh, lost with like eleven and eleven as well to Li Xi Feng. That's true. I mean, he was he was he was playing that good, so it was a uh, it was a crazy good week uh, for him. Um, yeah, as mentioned yeah. many times, interesting yeah. to follow him from here. But it was a uh, it was a I think it was a great All England. Uh, many surprises. Uh, Victor's loss, Lishi Thing won. Uh, obviously, me I'm personally glad to to have played a good tournament. Uh, Lishi Jia also yeah. managed to 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 step up again at the All England. I think it it must have been his fourth consecutive uh, semi final. Yeah, that that's pretty impressive. Also, uh, considering like how he did at the German Open, where I think most of the guys watching also saw the uh, like the Instagram story he posted uh, after losing to a uh, Chia Hao Li from uh, Chinese Taipei, where he just. Uh, uploaded like a black screen saying mm. I'm fucking done. <laughs> I think he wasn't yeah. in the best I mean, his best state of mind, but I actually I also I understand him cuz I was watching that match against the uh, Chia Hao Li in uh, in German Open. He beat him 21-15 and he leads 20-16 in the second game and he had everything under control like Chia he he had no chance. Like there was there was no way he was not going to win that match, Li Xijia. Then he breaks a string on his first match point and like misses uh, one on the next one. And then it just like it was so obvious he, he became a little bit nervous, like started to think about, yeah, he shouldn't lose and stuff. So he loses those four match points. Then he's down 2015 in the uh, in the final game. He comes back to 21 all uh, to 20 all gets another match point and also misses that one and then loses. So like. I think he's missing uh, yeah, like five match points in total in uh, both the second and, and third game. So I can wow. completely relate to the feeling he must have had after that match. I think it was a completely fair uh, story he uploaded. Yeah, okay. So he he, he was obviously full of uh, frustrations. Um, Definitely. I, I didn't see the match. I only saw the story and I was like, what, what's going on here? Yeah. <laughs> but I was, I was obviously happy to see him 
the the week after at the All England, so he wasn't uh, he wasn't effing done. He was no, uh, no, no. He was he was still in the mix, but I, I kind of like his. Um, I mean, say what you want. Obviously, there's um, there's a lot of reasons why you shouldn't make an, an Instagram story like that. And I'm thinking about sponsorship deals and stuff like mm. that. So that I mean, if if I was if I was sponsoring a, a certain player and he said something like that, I was I was I I would wonder. Why? Well, hmm. well, what's going on here? That's that doesn't seem that positive. Um, hmm. True. <laughs> I mean, so there's obviously reasons why the, the it, it wasn't a good idea to post that. I don't know if he regrets it or not. But I also kind of like that he just like he just he just does it, and then he shows up the next week and and performs, and you never really know. I mean, he's an hmm. he's an unpredictable character. This is yeah, he's our, our good friend here on on the channel as well uh wish, wish him uh, nothing but but the best uh, so it's uh yeah i mean i would rather have players like him uh doing stuff like that than 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 don't have him i mean it's uh, it's it's great entertainment and when he plays his best game it's it's uh, amazing yeah. to watch so it gives everyone something to talk about and we really like need that in the, in the sport that that's for sure exactly um there was a there was a a bit about men single, um, but uh, I think we should also mention at least uh, one other player. I think we're going to touch on a few other players and categories categories as well. But Hans Christian, my favorite badminton player, <laughs> yes, won the women's singles category. Anse Young from Korea, twenty one yeah. years of age, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah. Her fir- her first All England title. Um, she won the final against Chen Yufei, twenty-one nineteen in the in the third game, and she mm. also won uh, a crazy good semi-final against uh, Tai Su Ying. Uh, I got to see uh, a crazy a, match. I got to see a, a bit of uh, of that one. I didn't really got to see much of uh, the final. Only the last, like the very last, uh, few points. Mm. She's just she's just amazing. I mean, her 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 style, her confidence, her character. <laughs> Yeah, uh, she is a she's she's really a character, and and I really yeah, love yeah. that about her. Um, and I get I get you can also just you can just see that young, confident. Um, I mean, way way of like carrying herself. It's it's really uh, it's really amazing to watch. Mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like the way she's celebrating after her wins, like just like showing the name on her back and stuff like it, it's just amazing you don't really see it from a lot of the uh, the female players to have that kind of like confidence and wanting to i would almost say like like kind of show off like how good you are uh, mm. it's it's just amazing to see and also uh, like I, I would probably least expect it from a korean badminton player actually uh, so like it, it's just it's just unbelievable it's amazing to see but that semi final against the uh, tsai Ying, like i was watching uh, the entire match uh, on TV, and it was just like one ridiculously crazy rally after the other. Like Tai Su Ying, she was really back at what I would say is her best. Like she she played a technical, unbelievable game, uh, disguises all the time, and trick shots, and like she was the one trying to create everything. I felt like, and uh, like Anse Young, she just kept on getting everything back, fought her way back into the match, survived a couple of match points. It was just like a yeah the best best advertisement for uh, for women's badminton you can imagine. I, I really really enjoyed that one uh, so much. Well, one thing that I, I that I feel like is uh, it's very impressive about uh, Anse Young is um, how calm she is during the matches, even though mm. it's like super close and stuff. And then when she finally wins the match, she goes crazy and really celebrates like. There you get yeah. to see how much it actually means to her, and there you mm. also get to see how much she is carrying with her during the match. I mean, in terms of emotions and stuff, because it's just right under the surface, all those emotions. Yeah. But she's really able to like control herself and just be like, she's almost as mature as like a thirty-year-old uh, woman mm. or something. Um, yeah. She's she, she's so calm, and then. Uh, when she wins, she goes crazy, and there you get to see how much it means to her. 
And yeah. uh, I think that's 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 very impressive for a 21 year old uh, girl. That's, I think that's that's awesome. Definitely, definitely. I just I just looked it up. Like, how many World Tour titles do you think she already has? She's again, she's 21 years old. Somewhere between 10 and 15. Yeah, she's on 14. And seven, uh, seven runner-ups as well. So like 21 World Tour finals mm. at the age of 21. That's pretty insane. Like, I, I mean, I, she's, she's, yeah. Yeah, I was just going to say oh. like her and uh, Yamaguchi. Like lately, I feel like those two have kind of separated themselves a little bit from the rest. Like it's it's not like the other girls can also uh, like beat them and stuff. But a lot of the, yeah, the late... The finals lately has been between uh, those two. I know Chen Yufei now made the final here. I think Yamaguchi was also injured in his shoulder, actually, during All England. Uh, but it's kind of like those two have separated a little bit, and then we have still a big group of women singles players who also play at a really high level. But I, I feel like Ansi Young and Yamaguchi right now are the two players that everyone needs to uh, to measure themselves against and, uh, and need to beat if they want to be able to win the uh, the big titles. Two two very different characters, <laughs> Yamaguchi yeah, and I and Sion. It's almost like two opposites. I don't I don't really know I don't really know how how uh, big badminton is in Korea in terms of like popularity, mainstream popularity and stuff. Um, mm. I just really hope that she can become like a mega star out in out in Korea, mm. like or maybe maybe. Maybe in Asia, I mean, uh, she she really has like this, this uh, this star quality. Um, yeah. yeah, the the way she carries herself is unusual, and uh, yeah. it, it could be. I, I feel like Tai Su Ying, she is like huge. I'm quite sure that she's very yeah. very popular, and I also felt like she had a lot of fans in the arena. Um, mm. It it was it was quite obvious that the um, I was in the warm up courts, so I couldn't see see the match but i could hear every single time tai Su ying won a point mm. and i could also hear when an young won a point but it was because the crowd was uh, obviously less loud and yeah, um, so yeah. it, it was it was very clear that they were cheering for for tai Su ying in that match yeah. um yeah but i just hope that she becomes like a mega star goes beyond badminton and just mm. uh yeah attracts a lot of new uh, new eyes to the sport i think she really has the ability uh to do that mm. yeah I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> but overall, Hans Christian, maybe uh, uh, surprisingly, I'm not sure, but a very, very good All England for for Korea. I'm sitting yeah. here with the. I mean, they won the the won the women's doubles. Um, two two Korean pairs. An Se Young won the women's singles, and then they also had uh, a pair in the final in the mixed doubles. Lost in in three games to 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 the Chinese pair, uh, Xing Shui Wei. Huang, yeah. oh, Huang, help me out, Han Tristan. Mm, Huang Yekyong, I would say, but I'm not yeah. sure if I <laughs> pronounce it correctly. Uh, but yeah, a, right. a really incredible All England for Korea. They also had another pair in the semifinals and mixed doubles. They had an All Korean semifinals, uh, which was another insane match, by the way. 28, 26 in the uh, in the second game. Uh, it was in, like an unbelievable semifinal day. But yeah, Korea really. Uh, I didn't look it up or anything, but it must be one of the uh, the best All Englands for them in uh, in recent times. I, I was very surprised with the uh, like the women's doubles final. Uh, I was traveling to uh, to Basel yesterday, uh, so I didn't watch all the finals. But when I was in the in, uh, sitting in the airport waiting to board my flight, I I tuned in, uh, and uh, when I had turned on the TV. The score was eleven one in the second game, and they had won the first game twenty one five. And I, I was like, like, what has been going on? So I had to uh, make a tweet and ask people, like, what has been going on? Like, is is someone injured or like what has happened? And everyone just uh, yeah wrote to me that like these two Kim and Kong, they just played with no mistakes, high pace, got everything back, and they had just uh, especially Kong had had just raised her level to a uh, yeah completely new heights. So n- nothing was actually happening in that first. Uh, one and a half sets apart from Kim and Kong just playing some unbelievable badminton. I, I was watching a little bit when they played the uh, Jia Yifan and uh, Chen Qing Chen in the, the semifinal, and that was also a like very high level badminton, very entertaining. Uh, yeah, very entertaining badminton. Uh, that was not the semifinal, the quarterfinal. Sorry. So yeah, it, great, great it, 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 for Korea. 
It looked a bit weird that final. The the, the scores definitely looked a bit weird. Mm. I didn't get to see the match either. I was traveling, traveling home. So mm. I was. I, I think I was playing right after one of these. Uh, I was on the quarterfinal day. I was playing right after um, Kim and Kong. They they played against. That is uh, correct because that, that is. Uh, I will admit that's the only reason why I watched it because I was waiting for your match. <clears throat> I I feel like. So me and Anthony Ginting, we were playing the quarterfinal and we were playing Friday evening. And the match before that was a women's double Korea against uh, China. And I feel like, as usual, it, did a, it ended up being a one and a half hour match. And it was, I mean, I think me and Anthony, we ended up warming up for two hours because the mm, match yeah. just kept, I mean, they just kept coming back. And it was, uh, it was, it was, it was kind of crazy. Yeah, just looking at the scores, it was 21-19, 20-22, 22-24. Twenty <laughs> I, I feel like it's 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 so insane with women's doubles. I mean, obviously, I also played some close matches and all the categories does. But I just feel like it's guaranteed with... Um, and obviously, it's not guaranteed. Just look at the final. But I feel like it's it's almost <laughs> guaranteed with women's doubles. It's also all, always so, so close, match, close matches. It's... Uh, yeah. I don't yeah, know. I just I think simply like the best pairs. Uh, I think like especially like top eight, like the defense is just incredible, making it so difficult to to like create and score the points. So the pairs just they have to be so patient and play play for so long you know, before they they really find the openings. Uh, and that that just makes some like really really tough physical uh, battles always. Uh, but I really like. In the past, and maybe still to some extent, I, I think women's doubles has this reputation of being boring. Uh, and really, when you watch the top eight pairs, I, I think it's it's so wrong actually because they play at a really really high pace. Uh, the only issue is that like the matches sometimes really drag out and become long, but it's it's really high paced and it's a lot of rallies. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of really really enjoyable uh, matches to watch in the uh, in the women's doubles category and i would say actually in that final as well when i was watching the second part uh of it after that 11-1 uh, interval it, it was still some very good badminton uh, lee suhi and uh, bai kana who, who lost like they didn't give up at any point which i actually found quite impressive of, of course uh yeah you should never give up but still you're in a pretty hopeless situation at 21-5 11-1 down but they just kept on giving 100 percent and uh yeah, that final part I watched was actually uh, still pretty pretty nice to watch, even if it wasn't, of course, uh, uh, exciting in any way because it was pretty clear who was going to win. I think the problem sometimes uh, with women's doubles is is when the shuttlecocks is uh, is too slow because then then they simply can't uh, get it get it uh, get it down in, in their attack. And that sometimes makes the rallies mm. just being with a bunch of clears and and uh, if they give up on the on the option to attack and to score the points that way, then it can become a bit boring uh, for me personally to watch. And um, and sometimes t- during the last few years, the shuttlecocks has been insanely slow, uh, and I think that takes away some of the the, the fun as- aspects of women's doubles. Um, yeah, for me to see, but it is kind of insane to see. I mean, their ability to work hard, their ability to stay focused. Mm. Um, that's that's very very impressive because the rallies can get so long, mm. and it's really about maintaining focus, uh, not make any mistakes, and just be super tough, uh, super mentally and physically, yeah. super disciplined. So, so it it is very impressive. Um, so that's all I want to say about that. Well put, Anas. Well put. And now the category we need to talk just a bit about is the men's doubles, because yeah, obviously, like the daddies, they did it again. Like made another All England final, uh, and like again, the matches were just like hugely entertaining. Uh, like both the uh, the quarter final uh, where they won nineteen in the third, but also the, the semi final against the uh, Yang. And uh, one from China. Did you watch that one? Ended up twenty nine, twenty seven in the decider. 
Yeah, I was I was um I was at a restaurant uh restaurant I was eating uh, eating lunch. It was just a few hours prior to to my own match. Mm. I was watching it and it was uh, insane. Mm. Um so so many crazy thing things happened in in those uh deciding points in in the third game like for instance when one of the Ch- Chinese guys broke his racket. Unbelievable. He went to the he went to the net and played a shot with it and I think it was such a one he he had like a, a, a huge opportunity to finish the rally, but then he hit it into the net, and the Chinese players were like celebrating crazy. And it was, and it wasn't just it was, any rally; it was in 2019. Like it was a match point. It was just unbelievable because, as you say, like the the racket was broken, and it wasn't just like like a little bit broken; like it was completely bent. So it was mm. uh, unbelievable. He got it back. But I mean, I, I, yeah, I mean. Should should he have seen that such a one? Maybe he should, but it's also it's going so fast that it must be so difficult to to re- realize that in the moment. Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I, I really enjoy that guy uh, Wang Chen from uh, from China. He was the guy who uh, who broke his racket. Like he has a lot of attitude on court, and like he's uh, like very expressive and smiling and laughing and uh, yeah, showing emotion whenever he wins. Like when he won that point with the broken racket, he was also celebrating like almost like he won the match it was uh, <laughs> it was just beautiful to see yeah that was insane do you, um do you know what happened to to uh, asan in in the final yeah i don't know what happened but it looked really bad uh, it was on the on 19 14 in the second game when uh, uh, alfian and Arianzo when they got the point to 20 uh, he went out on the side of the court and it looked like he he slipped a little bit and like straight away he just sat down and something happened to his uh, his knee like he almost couldn't walk on it afterwards like even the uh, yeah the umpire he said uh, yeah uh, asan is uh, is retiring um but then like asan and cetera and said like no 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 like they wanted to finish the match so he went on court even though he yeah he could hardly walk returned the serve and then just uh, like put the next one into the net to allow the teammates to actually win on court instead of winning on a uh, yeah on a retirement i think that was a re- really nice touch of uh, just sportsmanship uh, to finish off the match and uh, give Alfian and Arianto a, a full win but yeah i don't know i haven't heard uh, what happened i know that uh, the danish media spoke to the indonesian camp afterwards and they said yeah they needed to have a scan uh, i think today actually to see if they could see any uh, any serious damage but uh, they asked Sechuan if like he was concerned if this could be like the end of their career and he was just like no no I, i'm completely calm like it, it will be fine so he was okay. uh, he was not worried he's uh, sure they will come back so hopefully okay. we'll, they will do that it would be a shame to lose them uh yeah that way yeah definitely they have uh, they have plenty of years left in them both of them <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah I'm sure. still young i think he's only turning uh 35 this year Mm, that's no age. No, exactly. Maybe turning thirty six, but yeah, no age. He has he has at least at least like five to seven years. Left. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but um, but that means an All England title for Alfian and Arianto, the world number ones, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They they are really like uh, I would say the deserved world number ones at the moment. They have uh, definitely stepped up the game. What about uh, Kevin and Marcus? They didn't attend uh, the All England, right? Yeah, they pulled out uh, shortly before. Um, actually, I have to admit, I'm not completely up to date as to uh, why they did so. Um, but like they are, fair enough. Then, really, like in the background of uh, Indonesian men's doubles now, uh, like their ranking is is low and they're not really producing results anymore. It's uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens uh, to those two as a pairing. And, and another injury update, if you have one, I don't really. Uh, Yuta Watanabe, I saw he uh, yeah. he got he got injured as well and it didn't really look good. I just saw a video on Instagram where he was like, uh, yeah, roll out of the, out of the court. Yeah, yeah. In a, in a chair. I don't I don't know what happened to him either. Uh, I saw the videos as well, so also fearing the worst. But uh, yeah, I haven't heard yeah. any uh, any updates. So uh, yeah, can't give you that. Okay, Cra- crazy good player as well. I mean, uh, I would believe that if there was ever a, a body that would never get injured, it would have been Yuta Watanabe because he's 
agility is absolutely insane. Uh, but I mean, it, it, it can happen to anyone. It's, um, it's, uh, it sucks. It's, I really hope that, uh, that he's okay. And I hope I is okay as well. Um, and get back soon, as soon as possible. Agreed. Agreed. Let's uh, cross our fingers for that. Definitely. I have, I have one thing that I need to tell you about, about the all England uh, this year. Yeah. I don't, I don't know if you know about it. Um, so do you remember the post I made on our Instagram, the Bamson experience, the, our, uh, Instagram uh, page about the training facilities. And I mentioned, especially all England, uh, as an example of how, uh, yeah. horrible it can be with, with the floors being way too hard, both in the training arena and also at the warm-up courts yeah i remember so this year actually they laid down wooden floor on the warm-up courts and on the on the on the training courts so there oh. was wooden floor wooden floor all over the place i mean it was still it was still hard because i believe it was placed right on top of the uh, of the concrete down under mm. but i mean i don't i don't want to um how do you say that not not blame myself, but when it's like in a positive uh, way, I don't want to take all the credit. That's what I want to say. <laughs> but I just want to say, I mean, I have never experienced that, and I don't, I don't think that has ever been a thing at the All England. It's always been known for uh, extremely, extremely hard services that that we practice on and warm up on. And after that Instagram post, for the first time ever. Mm. wooden floor at the uh, at the warm-up and the training facilities it's the power of tbe the power of the bamson experience yeah. so i think cr credit where credits do um awesome i don't know i mean it can't be from uh from some somewhere else i don't know if if it has anything to do with us but uh, maybe it has been planned for a little bit longer but uh i also saw that uh, i saw some video of a player's lounge that actually looked pretty decent is, is that true that I didn't see. Okay, uh, I just uh, I think I saw it on Instagram or something uh, where they had uh, uh, was it a PlayStation? I'm not sure, but I saw actually a, a pretty decent looking uh, players lounge because it has for many many years at All England been a complete joke to be honest. The players lounge, uh, but it looked uh, pretty decent this time. I'm not sure. I mean, when you when you exit the when you exit the um, from playing a match when you exit the courts. You go down the hallway, mm. and and there is like a like a catering for all, for all the uh, line judges and mm. yeah all the people working for the event, and that just smells like super good every time you cross that uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, that room yeah and that's uh that 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 makes me hungry every single time I cross that yeah but I I I, I don't know if if there was a good players lounge or not uh, my, the hotel is very close mm. there's a bunch of restaurants uh, restaurants uh, right beside and stuff so I didn't really spend much time in the hall other than playing and warming up and that was it yeah that sounds uh, reasonable I w one thing that I feel like we should do and Christian in badminton is I mean the weather obviously sucks at this time and in Birmingham it's uh it's it's always raining and it's it's kind of gray. I mean, it's it's not the best weather here in Europe at this time. What about what about we played in Asia now instead of in the summer, and then we played in Europe in the summer instead of now? Wouldn't that be amazing? That would be awesome. I think you should make another Instagram post, and then next year we have <laughs> like the perfect calendar. I th I think I think it would make sense because I mean, in Asia in the summer it's extremely warm. And right now here in Europe, the weather sucks. Mm. So, yeah, I think it's a it's think... a good suggestion. I'm uh, I'm up for it, and uh, then I might even prolong my career for another year or two if you make that happen. <laughs> yeah, see, I mean, <laughs> I I, uh, I feel like it's a good idea. Let's let's try it out. Let's see if it works. Yeah, yeah, agree. Everyone, yeah. everyone, even though you're not a player, like the video if if you think that's a great. Idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, Hans Christian, I think um, that was it. I think we uh, we got to cover all England men single most mostly because that is our discipline. That's uh, <laughs> we can't lie about that. Yeah. But um, but uh, I'll let you I'll let you have some rest and prepare for the Swiss Open. I'm looking forward to follow you down there. I'll do my best. I'm up against the uh, Tomat Junior Popov, whom I have mm. never beaten actually. So uh, hopefully uh, this will be the first time. Interesting. Let me uh, 
yeah, promise me a good fight. I'm looking forward to 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 see it. And uh, are we going to see each other in Madrid? No, the I'm Spain Open. No, I'm not playing Spain Masters. Uh, I'm skipping that one, uh, and then I will play Oliang Masters. So if you are mm. still planning on going there, then we will see each other in uh, in France. I'm I'm planning to go there, uh, but just because of the fact that you are going there, I am already considering uh, pulling out. So that makes me happy. <laughs> I mean, if I think we should try. We should try to avoid each other for as long as possible. If you that, can that, get that... Uh, your good friend friend Gemke to pull out as well, that would be amazing. Because I'm playing him first round in Oleon, so oh, interesting. He doesn't have to go. I'll give him some tips on how to beat you. Ooh, like you know how to. <laughs> well, Hans Christian, um, thank you for this episode, and uh, to everyone watching, thank you for doing that. As mentioned, if you haven't done it, please remember to subscribe to the Bamson Experience on YouTube, like this video, leave a comment, let us know if you agree with what we have been saying or if you absolutely disagree um, or not. Follow us on Instagram as well. And that's it. Stay tuned for the next episode of the Bamson Experience. Bye-bye, guys. Bye-bye-bye.